Well, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. You know, the season of Advent is a special time of preparation to celebrate the amazing reality of the birth of the Son of God. And today we, be we begin the third week of Advent. And you'll notice that in the Advent wreath, we've lit the third candle, the pink candle. And my vestments are also pink. I don't particularly like to wear pink, but twice a year we do. Why? Because today's, first, because today's readings focus on the joy that awaits us this Christmas. Okay, so how many more days to Christmas? Is anybody counting? Eight days more to Christmas, left to prepare for Christmas. So if you have started to prepare for Christmas by perhaps buying gifts or hanging lights or buying special food, raise your hand if anybody started doing any of this stuff. Not a lot of you guys. You only got eight days left, okay? Eight days left. That's it. You better start, you know, turning, get, start preparing. Now, before I turn to the readings of today, permit me to give you five habits that I think will make this Advent and Christmas a lot better. Habit number one. This Advent, practice moments of silence in this season of a lot of noise. So in the midst of the hustle and the bustle and the noise and perhaps the stress of, of all the activity, take moments just to be in silence. Silence is the place where joy and gratitude grow. Silence isn't just the absence of noise. It's about opening yourself up to the presence of God. Okay, habit number two, fast this, in the season of feasting. So Brother Ryan, Father Zachary, and I, and our whole community, we will be doing an ember fast on Wednesday, December the 20th, Friday, December the 22nd, and Saturday, December the 23rd. So consider fasting or abstaining from certain foods, or for sure like sweets, during Advent. And then in Christmas, you can go at it. But habit number three. Practice radical generosity in this season of aggressive shoppers and sometimes like greed. So consider being like super generous, but doing so anonymously in secret, shh, like Santa Claus. Truly, there is more joy in giving, especially anonymously, than in receiving. Habit number four, organize several family meals. Try to convert your dinner table into a, like a sacred encounter with God by singing some Advent or Christmas songs, by taking turns praying for the needs and the plans and the dreams of each of your family members. And finally, habit number five, celebrate eight days of Christmas, not just one. But you know that in the church calendar, Christmas is not a single day, but eight days from December 25th to January the 1st. And the entire Christmas season is even longer. It's, the, it's 12 days. There's actually a song, The 12 Days of Christmas. And that goes from December 25th all the way to the, the Feast of the Epiphany on January the 6th. Okay, so these are just five simple suggestions that I hope to make this Advent and Christmas better for you so that you could re have renewed love, hope, but especially today, joy. The theme of this weekend is joy. Now, speaking of joy, turn with me to the second reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians chapter 5. We're going to go to verse 16 to 18. That says this, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing in all circumstances. Give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Okay, so let's stop right there. So the first thing that St. Paul writes to us is that God wants us to Rejoice always. Now, the sign language for rejoice is like this. Rejoice. I like that. And then he tells us how to rejoice always by praying without ceasing and giving thanks in all circumstances. The sign language for praying is like this. This is the sign language for praying. And then the sign language for giving thanks is like this. Like giving thanks. So we are called to Rejoice always and pray without ceasing and give thanks in all circumstances. Now today I want to focus on the fruit of the Holy Spirit named joy. Okay, raise your hand if you want to be more joyful. Anybody here wants to be more joyful? 
Good. Somebody even waves their hand. Good. So what is joy? Please repeat after me. Joy is the bright spirit, the bright spirit. and radiant continent, uh, uh, countenance and radiant countenance that makes that comes from being filled with God. That comes from being filled, filled with, God. with God. So for a Christian, joy is not what you feel when life goes perfectly well. No. Nope. Joy is what happens when you know that you are loved perfectly, even when life's a total mess. You see, joy isn't the absence of pain or problems. It's the presence of Jesus. Now, every human heart is born looking for joy. And your desire for joy drives everything you've ever looked for in life. For example, if you're looking for a better job, looking for more money, or like me when I was a teenager, maybe you want to be like a millionaire, it's because you think money will give you what? Joy. Even if someone robs a bank, it's because they think the money they robbed will give them what? Joy. If someone drinks booze or takes drugs, it's because they mistakenly think that that will give them what? joy. If you want success, it's because you believe success will bring you what? Joy. Everyone wants to be joyful. So do me a favor. Please tell the person next to you, you want joy. Could you just say that to them? You want joy. It's true. Whether you dream of a great marriage or a big yacht or a beautiful home in San Pedro, you want it because you think it will bring you Joy. It's ultimately a God-given desire for the joy of heaven. In fact, we're wired for eternal joy. The question is, what actually makes you joyful? No, a lot of people think that if they just had more money, then they would be very happy. Oh, well, if I could just win the lottery, then I'll be really joyful. And the truth is that, yes, money can buy you entertainment and expensive gifts and a, a lot of things, but money can't buy you happiness. Or other people think, well, if I have honor and fame, then I will be very happy. Other people think that if they can just be better than someone else, then at least that they'll be happy. The problem is that, that they're always comparing themselves to others. Oh, I'm, I'm more pretty than you, or I'm smarter than you, or I'm a better athlete than you, or I have more money than you, or I'm the winner and you're the loser. And people like this will never be happy. Now, other people think that, you know, using drugs or smoking marijuana or drinking rum or taking pills will bring them joy. Other people think it's just eating a lot of great food like a lobster or, or tamales or chocolate cake. It will bring them happiness. Other people think it's pornography or lots of sex, that that will make them totally happy. In other words, a lot of people think that their happiness and joy comes from their external circumstances. When I lose weight, then I'll be happy. When I get a new golf cart, then I'll be happy. When I marry that person, then I'll be very happy. When, I ha when, when we have kids, then I'll be happy. When all the kids are grown up and leave home, then I'll be happy. Or if I can only get a better job, then I'll be happy. Or if I can, I just need to go out and dance all night, La Macarena, then I'll be happy. Or if I retire in San Pedro, then my joy will be complete. And then you get all of these things, you do all of these things, and yet you're still not totally joyful or happy. It's like, what's up with that? Like, what's up with that? Well, here is the hard truth. Real joy does it depend on a change in your external circumstances. Rather, it depends on a change in you. So do me a favor. Please tell the person next to you, you will be joyful when you change. Could you just say that? You will be joyful when you change. So stop blaming the circumstances. I'll be at peace when my, teenage, when my teenager starts respecting me. I'll be happy when my husband starts treating me right. No, you will be joyful when you change. That's the truth. And the good news is that's about the only thing you can change, you. 
Now, St. Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, reminds us today, brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Be joyful always. See, joy is, is a very powerful force in our lives. Joy can, makes temptations a lot easier to overcome. Joy makes forgiving people easier. Joy makes it easier to pursue our dreams. Joy helps us to come back from setbacks. Joy helps you to be more productive at work. Joy actually helps you to have better health and, and live longer. Joy is a spiritual strength. And joy makes the world a better place. Pope Benedict XVI, he once wrote this and I quote, The deepest poverty is the inability to experience joy. The inability of joy produces the inability to love and produces jealousy and avarice and other defects that devastate our life. See, this is why the devil wants to rob your joy. Because joy gives you spiritual strength and the demons want you sad, weak, and devastated. So if you pay attention, many of our spiritual battles in life are simply the devil trying to steal our joy. That's why the joy of the Lord must be your strength. God save us from a sad and joyless church, from a sad and joyless Christianity. Your family, your church, your friends, and San Pedro need you to be more joyful. We got plenty of sadness around. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about just like a surface joy. I'm talking about deep spiritual joy, the kind of joy that lasts forever. So here's a big question. How can you consistently be more joyful? Now, there are various ways and various rules uh, to, to live more joyfully. You know, practice silence, love yourself, have fun, smile more, exercise, rest well, make friends, serve, transform your, your mind and your worldview through the eyes of faith. You know, to learn more about joy, I do invite you to read a wonderful book by a, Christ, a Catholic evangelist named Chris Stefanik. And the, the title is named Living Joy. I'm actually hoping to start a new ministry next year in 2024 named Living Joy. So how can you be more joyful? Well, St. Paul told us how. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in all circumstances, give thanks. So let me focus on one of them, giving thanks. Now, this sounds like super simple, yet gratitude is super powerful. Do you want your marriage to be healed, your mood improved, your family happier? Do you want God's blessings like unleashed in your life? Then in all circumstances, give thanks. Give thanks. You know, gratitude is the key that will, keep, that will help unlock a smile on your face. So let me see your smile. I'm going to look around and see if I can see anybody smiling. See, I can see... A couple of smiles, but I think I see a lot of people struggling to smile right now. It's like, hey. then, then just start thanking God right now. Just even for being here, even if you're like bored with my homily. Lord, thank you for this mass. Thank you for Father Eduardo's message, you know. Th that simple prayer can bring a smile to your face, even just a little bit. Now, a friend of mine went on a mission trip to the, very, the poorest country in our hemisphere, Haiti. And he says that the kids in Haiti smile more than the kids at Disneyland. And I was like, why? Well, despite the terrible poverty that they live in, despite the earthquakes and the hurricanes and the political instability in that, in that country, the reason Haitian kids smile so beautifully is because they're, thank, they're constantly thanking God. That's why it is like so important to get into the habit of replacing habitual whining. Do we have any habitual whiners here? With habitual thanksgiving. That's what we need. For example, turn with me to the first reading today when the prophet Isaiah. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10. It says this, I rejoice heartily in the Lord. 
And in my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of joy, of justice, excuse me. Now, please notice that the prophet Isaiah does not say, I rejoice heartily in my gifts and my toys are the joy of my soul. Nope. And the prophet doesn't say, well, I rejoice in my 46-inch TV and, and I'm filled with joy with my iPhone. Nope. The prophet proclaims, I rejoice heartily in the Lord. And in my God is the joy of my soul. So the joy of his soul comes from God. And then the prophet tells us the reason for his joy. For he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice. So notice that God did not clothe him with like the latest fashions or God did not wrap him with like a super expensive coat. Nope. God clothed him with a robe of salvation and wrapped him in a mantle of justice. This Christmas, the most important gifts you can receive are the ones that Jesus wants to give you. A robe of salvation and a mantle of justice. And what? is that well a person who is clothed with salvation is a person who has been saved by jesus christ from the power of the demons and death and a person wrapped in a mantle of justice is a person who has been forgiven and renewed by the power of the holy spirit now perhaps you're thinking and where can i buy those amazing gifts for christmas well the wonderful news is that salvation and justice are gifts that our Lord Jesus already paid for with his own blood on the cross. And he wants to give them to you. And it doesn't matter if your life is in a shambles right now. What truly matters is that you receive the gifts of Jesus and then begin the journey towards true joy. In fact, your joy is God's ultimate plan for your life. Final example. Today's responsorial psalm didn't come from the psalms. It actually came from Mary's Magnificat. And in Luke chapter 1, verse 46 to 47, Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. So think for a moment. The Virgin Mary, pregnant with Jesus, was filled with gratitude and with supernatural joy in God, her Savior. You see, God's joy is a byproduct of God's salvation. So pray with me right now for this gift. If you wish, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. You are the love and joy that I was born to find. You are, you are the love and joy. And joy I was born to have. You are offering me your forgiveness and salvation. You're offering, offering me your, your forgiveness, forgiveness and, and salvation. salvation. I joyfully receive all your gifts. I joyfully receive all your gifts. This Christmas. This Christmas. Clothe me with a robe of salvation. Clothe me with a robe of salvation. And wrap me in a mantle of justice. And wrap me in the mantle of justice. Amen. Amen. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. Amen.